Take the, take, yeah, remove that evidence, because otherwise I'll just sit here and eat it. Hi. How you doing? Great. Excellent. Um, I promised this little bit where I actually talk to you guys and have actual content in my talks. It's really, really short. Then we're going to actually go outside and do the fun stuff. Um, so what I want to talk about is called Every Page is Page One. Has anyone heard of this? Is this new to everybody? You've heard of it? Okay. All right. So every page is page one. This is a documentation model, essentially. And what we're trying to do is break this idea of a book. And this is something that the early speakers have all spoken about, too. Books are boring. Books are dead. And David Ryan mentioned it fairly extensively. We're not interested in books anymore. It's all about getting content and getting content in a really efficient way. So what we need to do is make sure that every topic that people hit is the first topic that they can read. And it makes sense within their context. So this is, this is a book by Mark Baker. He has a website as well, which is quite interesting. Um, I strongly suggest you read the book if you're interested in this kind of stuff, though. I know, I know, books are dead. And, and actually mentions the irony of that in the beginning of his book. It's like, this is so crazy, I'm writing this book about every page is page one. Um, so what we're trying to do is sort of remove, remove ourselves from this strictly imposed order that books give us and move towards more a collection of content. And the way I like to explain this to people is to talk, talk about the difference between, say, Encyclopedia Britannica and Wikipedia. When you go to a Wikipedia page, it doesn't matter which page you read first, and it doesn't matter what information that you have in your head already that you bring to it. If you don't understand something in a Wikipedia page, you can click through and get more information. Now, I don't know about any of you guys, but I want to demonstrate what my thought process looks like when I go and, and look for information. I'm one of these people who likes to read, I, I like to watch movies and that kind of thing, and I always like to do it with my tablet. So I bought a 10-inch tablet, so basically so that I could sit on the couch and look at IMDb and Wikipedia while I was going. And I have this whole thing, and it's like, I end up with all these questions about what I'm doing, and like, you know, um, what, was the, what was the one I was thinking of that I was going to, going to mention? Is Genovia a real place? That was one that I looked up. Um, also, is iocane powder really tasteless? This was, this was something that really came up and was, in, was interesting to me. So, of course, I've got my Android tablet. I'm sitting there, and the first thing I do is, is Google it. But I end up picking up all this rather random, interesting stuff as well. So I start out Googling for iocane, right? Get sidetracked by Doctor Who, end up looking at binary stars, and then end up looking at random hip-hop artists that I've never heard of. It's like, who's done this? Have we all done this? Yes, exactly. And this is what one page, every page is page one. That's what this is about. It's being able to leap between this information in that kind of fashion. So, like I said, Wikipedia is a really great example. Um, you can read one page in isolation and then go on and get the information you need and move on. Or you can dig deeper and keep going. Um, it also helps to cater for different knowledge. And that's why I've put up a, a admittedly silly man page. Um, this is a generator. It's a, it's a Git man page generator. It's funny. Go Google for it. Um, <laughs> um, so basically what we're doing is, is saying that you don't need to worry. If you're writing something, say you're writing something reasonably technically complicated, you don't actually need to worry about whether or not someone understands basic Linux commands because you could just include a link. They can go and look up those basic Linux commands if they want to. They don't need it. They can move right on. It doesn't ruin their day. Uh, so getting back to EPO, the, the way of thinking about this is to turn the usual content generation model on its head. Um, generally, what we used to do is curate the content first and then produce that information for people all nicely digested. What we're actually trying to do is put all the information out there and allow users to curate that themselves. And a really good example of this is carsales.com.au. The reason I like this is because, yeah, I, I don't, does it actually say on there how many listings they have? I think it does. Yes, 201,000. This is a screenshot from a few days ago because I write my slides really late. Um, so yeah, 200,000 200, 200, listings there. That's a lot of cards to go sifting through. What you can do, though, is you can then narrow it down. And lots of websites do this. You use, this, you use these selectors down the side, and all of a sudden you narrowed it down to the kind of car you want, make, model, year, where it's located, how much you want to spend, all those kinds of things. So this is the idea about curating content once it's been created, rather than the other way around. So, you know, obviously, eventually with car sales, you find the perfect car for you. And this is basically end-user curation at its finest, and this is where I'd like to get my documentation to. So, okay, I promise that's the boring bit. What I want to do, is everyone aware of this book? Yes. Does everyone know we're going on a bear hunt? Is there anyone who doesn't know we're going on a bear hunt? I'm sorry, guys. Are you kidding? So 
so many people. Okay, so I'll have to very quickly run you through the book. I promise I won't read it. This is actually my daughter's book. It still has her name in it. She's sitting up there. <laughs> so thank you, Talia, for the use of the book. So basically what happens is the family set out on a bear hunt, right? And they run into all these obstacles. Now, a children's book, and they're not scared, not even a little bit. So they run into all these obstacles that they can't, they, you know, they have trouble, they can't go over it and they can't go under it. And uh, Talia and I always did wonder why they didn't go round a lot of things, but they don't seem to. They always end up going through it. And so there's all these various obstacles. Now, the interesting thing about children's books is they're often presented in narrative form like this. You start at the beginning and you go through to the end. But the fact is, it doesn't matter which order these obstacles come in. You can get, these, get through these obstacles any way you like. Either way, you're still going to end up in the end with a bear. Right? You still get to the cave, you still get the bear, you still get scared, you have to run back through all the grass and the snowstorm and all those kinds of things, and then you get home, hide under the covers, and that's the end of the story. It's always a happy ending. The point I want to make is we always start and end at home, but the things that we do while we're, while we're out walking around in our adventure looking for a bear, it doesn't matter which order they come in. And so in order to demonstrate that, I have several printouts from said book. I have some Play-Doh, because Play-Doh's fun, and I did Lego last year. I also have some dice to add a little bit of error of chance into the game because, you know, bears are a bit chancy. I also have chocolates to bribe you all to come out into the hallway and play with me. So, who's ready to go out and chase a bear? Woo! Let's do it! By show of hands, not a tech writer. There's your answer, Sven. Yeah. Sysadmin, software engineer. Human. What was that? Human. human. <laughs> and there's one human. <laughs> and what do you do? We don't have enough microphones. <laughs> just speak in that one. All right, sure. And then I'll hand this over to. Testing. Okay. Testing. I'm, I'm kind of a big mess of things. I'm actually a software developer, really. But at the moment, I do a support role in Docker, and I'm one of the documentation maintainers and writers for the Docker project. So I don't know what my role is either. I just do stuff. Yeah. Yeah, and I have to admit, that's why I was asking the question then. I guess I'll, I'll talk about that a bit more in, in my talk. 